I challenged my good friend and YouTube rival, Aaron Zeng, to a battle with a twist. Each of us had to build around a new Pokemon introduced in the Teal Mask. Aaron with Sinistra and me with Ogre Pond. But immediately, I'd run into a problem. Which masks should I have Ogre Pond wear? Ogre Pond Fire is the most popular right now, but I found it kind of hard to use in testing, and I wanted to try out a set with Swords Dance. Looking at my options, I settled on Ogre Pond Water. Its ability Water Absorb is way stronger against Urshifu, and the defensive typing is better, giving you more opportunities to set up a Swords Dance. Also, when it terastalizes, it gets a special defense boost, which can make it even harder to remove. I finished my moveset with Ivy Cudgel for damage, Spiky Shield for defense, and Horn Leash for healing. I wanted Pokemon that could protect Ogre Pond to let it set up, and the first thing that came to mind was Intimidate to weaken my opponents and let Ogre Pond tank more hits. Landorus T was the clear choice here, as with a Choice Scarf, it can be extremely fast, and with U-Turn, it can easily get in and out to intimidate opponents multiple times per game. I rounded out my moveset with Stomping Tantrum, Rock Slide, and Terra Blast with Terra Flying. Intimidate didn't feel like enough support, so I decided to add a Fake Out user. Rendering a threat unable to attack for a single turn feels like a big deal with Swords Dance. Just like with Intimidate, there was a clear choice here. Iron Hands. One of the strongest Pokemon in all of Generation 9, its great typing and incredible bulk make it a standout for a tanky, offensive fakeout user. I gave it the Assault Vest to help it stay alive, and the moves Drain Punch, Wild Charge, and Heavy Slam. Now that I had Iron Hands, I started thinking about Trick Room. My team wouldn't center around Trick Room, but having the option would be nice. After looking over the users, I decided on Cresselia. Not only is it incredibly bulky, it can support the team in multiple ways. The first is Lunar Blessing, which heals itself and its partner by 25% and removes status conditions. But that wasn't even the main draw for me. It was Icy Wind, a move that does a little damage and lowers your opponent's speeds by one stage. With both Icy Wind and Trick Room, I could use Cresselia against both faster and slower teams to ensure my heavy hitters were moving first. I gave Cresselia a Mental Herb to prevent Taunt from shutting it down. I felt I wanted another Pokemon that could work in and out of Trick Room, and my eyes settled on Heatran. It's a bulky Pokemon with a middling speed stat, and with a Life Orb, it hits really hard. I also like the synergy with Ogre Pond, giving me fire, water, and grass coverage with just two Pokemon, as well as immunities to fire and water with their abilities. I gave Heatran Earth Power, Flash Cannon, Protect, and Flamethrower. Normally people run Terra Blast, but I felt like I didn't need it since I already had Ogre Pond for grass coverage, which meant I only had one more slot. I looked at my team and I realized it was a little slow and that it only had two special attackers, which meant that there was a clear choice. Fluttermane. Nothing fancy here, it's one of the best Pokemon and it benefited a lot from the existing support on the team. I gave it a booster energy and a standard set of Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, Shadow Ball, and Protect with a Terra type of Fairy because I thought it was the most flexible. And just like that, the team was complete. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can do so using the rental code. Big thank you to my subscribers for helping me get these Pokemon in game. As for me, all that's left is to challenge Aaron and to see what team he cooked up. Okay, so we are here uh, now, ready for the battle. I'm really excited for this, to be honest. Um, I'm really excited to use Ogre Pond against a high-level opponent, someone that I really respect, so that's cool. And Aaron actually just sent over the open team sheet of his team, and it's really interesting. So you'll see the, the Pokemon here in a second, but he's got some strange Pokemon on his team, including Sinistra, which is a Pokemon that I personally think is very, very strong. So I'm excited to see how Aaron uses it. He has a lot of setup on his team, and he also has this Grim Snarl. So this is Dual Screens Grimmsnarl, which, you know, in my opinion, pretty scary, but also Volcarone with Quiver Dance, Heat Wave, Giga Drain, Terra Grass, King Gambit with Swords Dance and multiple powerful attacks. My, my Cresselia is actually pretty bad here. The Grimmsnarl's Terra Ghost, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lead off with Heatran and Iron Hands and have Ogre Pond in the back. My, my thought process is that Heatran actually looks really strong here with super effective Flash Cannon and, and Heat Wave and all that against a lot of these Pokemon. So the Sinistra does not have Trick Room, which means that I don't have to worry about a Trick Room option. I think I am gonna bring Landorus here because I don't think that it's Cresselia in this case. My thought process is once I force to Terra, Landorus is really good against Volcarona and Iron Hands is really good against Gambit. And Gambit is Terra Dark as well. So with Iron Hands, I wonder, like if he brings it, he's probably not bringing it up front. I have no idea my Life Orb Heatran calcs, by the way. So this might be an adventure that we go on together. The, the Volcarone is probably the thing that I'm most worried about, to be honest. Though, if I save Ogre Pond's Terra, then I can potentially use it there. I would expect 
Gyarados to come to this battle. I don't know if it's coming up front. The only thing that I'm pretty confident hoping is Gyarados. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sylveon, um, but we'll see. King Gambit and Grimmsnarl. Okay, so this is a pretty good lead for me because King Gambit, he, he doesn't have Protect. So I'm just gonna double the Grimmsnarl. If I force out the Terra, then King Gambit will lose to my Iron Hands. And I, there's not that much of a downside. It's Black Glasses King Gambit. I guess if, if Grimmsnarl Terra is, yeah, I mean, the screen's going up would be bad, but. Oh, unless, wait, unless Volcarona switches in, he could double out both. I didn't even think about that. Oh, wait, if Volcarona comes in here, then this turn could really backfire. Oh, it's leftovers Volcarona. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh no. Who's terrestrializing? Man. Oh, he got me. He super got me. That's not good. Okay, Grimstone Terrace to Ghost here. Aiko does nothing. Thank you for that. Light screen comes out. Okay. I mean, getting the Terra out is good, and getting damage on Grimstone Oh, with Machi with with Machi Geist or Sinistra, whatever. Okay, this is towards dance. I can just protect Heatran and it's relatively safe. Oh, you know what I bet he does? I bet he parting shots with Gyarados here. I could wild charge, but I, I think I think I need to go after this King Gambit, to be honest. I want to know who's faster. And this forces specific plays out of Aaron. I, I don't know for a fact that he has Gyarados even. So yeah, like, and because this King Gambit just can't really do anything against my Iron Hand, like this is a relatively safe play. Like Aaron can definitely punish it, but there's not that much of a downside for me. Like in a worst case scenario, maybe he party shots into Gyarados. Because the fact that he blew the Terra on the King, on the, on the Grimstone makes me wonder if he even has Gyarados in the game. Okay. Um. If you terrestrialize your King Gambit or your Grimmsnarl, then King Gambit or Gyarados can only use Waterfall. Oh, and no. Oh, I don't know my cow. Oh my, he's playing so well. He's a lot of damage. Man, he's he's really actually outplaying me pretty severely. I, I don't want to let Heatran go down here. It's my best answer to this Volcarona and this Sylveon, and it's good into Sinistra. So I think that like it's okay to make a play like this. Although if I get this turn wrong, things are gonna get pretty dicey for me pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, Aaron's team actually does a really good job in validating Ogre Pond because I want to go for Swords Dance, but I can't exactly do that uh, easily in front of like Reflect and Intimidate and Parting Shot. I'm almost wondering if Aaron even has Gyarados, though, to be honest. Based on the way he's playing this. He's really making a lot of predictions correct. Like, this is... I think team, like, lead-wise, at the very least, I had a pretty big advantage, but it currently feels more neutral. He could Sucker Punch my... Okay. He could have Sucker Punched my Iron Hands there as well, which would have been, like, a, like a double-up play. Oh. Okay, Iron Hands... Oh, right, this is a fast Iron Hands. I'm actually faster than his Grimstarl, which ends up being, I think, a pretty, pretty nice thing. Getting rid of the King Gambit here is pretty nice, by the way, because um, now I can now I don't need to worry about bringing in Lander. This is gonna do a lot. Over half of my remaining health, geez. Yeah, so I mean, I'm glad to get rid of the King Gambit, though letting Iron Hands take this much damage, like this was kind of my only way of getting rid of Gyarados, actually, now that I say it out loud. Volcarona comes in, all right. So here, okay, I'm gonna Swords Dance here, and I'm gonna switch to Landorus. Because until I know what the last Pokemon is, this is just going to be pretty difficult. I, I am lucky in that Heatran and Landorus are really good into Volcarona. Oh, I, I have to keep Sinistra in mind because the ability for him to switch in and use Hospitality to heal Volcarona up pretty much at any point means I need to be going for, for like big moves rather than trying to slow play this, I think. Yeah, these screens are annoying. Sinistra also, I, I can't really hit with Ogre Pond either. I, I really need to use Ogre Pond here to clear the Volcarona. Ogre Pond and Landorus. Assuming the last is Sinistra. Oh, he's going for uh, Spirit Break again. Okay. Cover Dance. Yeah. Uh, this is not great. Now he's going to be super fast. All right. Spirit Break into Landorus. It's not so much damage. He's plus one. I don't think I get one shot. I'm going to IV Kajal this turn. And I'm going to U-turn to the Grimstarl. Because I think Grimstarl has got to want a parting shot out here. Because my thought process is basically if he protects Volcarona, which I think is somewhat likely, I can go in. Maybe I should have Terran, actually. Yeah, if he protects Volcarona here, I can go into Iron Hands and go for a fake out and IV Kajal next turn. I, I am glad that the Grimstarl terrestrialized early because I, I do think that that ended up paying pretty big dividends. Yeah, that is protect. The question is, is this parting shot? Oh, wait, it could Rage Powder. Okay, parting shot comes out. To my Landorus, actually. Okay, so I'm still plus two on uh, on Ogre Pond, which is a pretty big deal. I actually think that that could be a pretty big deal for me. What does he comes in? It's either Sylveon or Gyarados. Oh, it could be Gyarados. Or Sinistra. Okay, it is Sinistra. So Hospitality is not activating because Volcarona is already a full HP. 
I think that this is actually a pretty good position for me, all things considered. Ogre Pond having the plus two is actually a pretty big deal here because even with Reflect, yeah, even with Reflect, this isn't so bad. Like I should still be KOing because, because of the Terra. But there's still four turns of Reflect left. I'm just gonna Ivy Cudgel and Fake Out, I think. And I think Aaron's best play here is actually to switch into Grimmsnarl and Macha Gacha and try and burn my Ogre Pond. So I, I still have Heatran in the back, which yeah, with Heatran still alive, I, I think that like my team is just, like Heatran is just really strong at Aaron's team. Like he doesn't really have, his only way of hitting is Gyarados. And if I Terra, then he, that doesn't even really work. Yeah, this is the right play, but I, I think it was the correct play for me. I mean, I didn't, like, the thing is that it's really hard for him to hit Heatran. It's really hard for me to hit Sinistra. Well, I, I do have Heatran, actually, so maybe not, not that hard. Does this even KO? It, it has Reflect up. Oh. Yeah, that KOs. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that actually did a lot of damage. He heals up. Does it burn either target? A burn on Ogre Pond would be kind of bad. No burns. Okay, I got bailed a little bit there. I'm gonna Ivy Cudgel here and I'm gonna switch to Heatran. He's already Terrid, which means that like, even like with Heatran in the back, I should be in a really good shape here, I think. And I don't wanna overcomplicate this because the way that I could lose this is he goes for a Quiver Dance. Yeah, I don't think he can ever beat Heatran, honestly. I think without Gyarados, Heatran becomes too powerful. Yeah, that, that's the correct play given what I did. He has another chance to go for a burn here. Yeah, no Protect on the King Gambit as well makes this kind of difficult. See. And this actually does a fair bit of damage. I love that animation. Okay, no burn. Lucky me. I cudgel, flamethrower. I'm in. I'm in kind of. I'm in very good position now. To be honest, he, he turns just yeah. He turns he like he turns so hard. Oh, he also you know he also has Terra Water Spec Sylveon with Terra Blast. However, like the problem with that is I can just scout it out with Protect. So yeah, I think in terms of team matchup. Ogre Pawn is, is very strong here because his team is all set up. So if I get like basically in a setup race or if I, if I get Ogre Pawn in before, before he's already set up a Pokemon, then he's going to have a pretty hard time dealing with it, I think, because if I get the Swords Dance up first, he doesn't have the bulk necessarily to tank through it. I, I definitely think the adjustment is going to be to bring Gyarados here for Eren. On my end, though, like what do I want to what do I want to do here? Like Fluttermane, oh, Fluttermane is strong. Dude, like I like the Pokemon I brought. To be honest, I don't think I bring Cresselia here. His team is way too tanky, and and I have Icy Wind Cresselia, so yeah, like I don't want to actually give the Kamada boost. So the only option, other Pokemon that I could bring is Fluttermane. I don't want to run into a position where like the Volcarona gets out of hand, so I do think bringing Landorus makes a lot of sense here. I definitely want Heatran, and then either Landorus or you know I'm gonna do this. This is a little risky, but I think he might leave. I think he's probably gonna leave Grimmsnarl behind. Because against like a specific Gyarados leads, I can find myself in trouble with this team. I'm worried about like a, a Sinistra lead, basically, like Sinistra Gyarados or even Sinistra plus Volcarona, where basically he is able to go for a Quiver Dance and Rage Powder. He could even Terra Fire the Sinistra to help like help it survive. What I'm leading doesn't help a ton versus that. Uh, well, I can fake out and Shadow Ball, which would be nice, but is Volcarona and Gyarados here? Okay. So last game, Aaron really read me almost every single turn. So I'm wondering if I should, like, I'm wondering if I should take that into consideration. I think he definitely has Sinistra in the back to support one of these Pokemon. I'm going to double the Volcarona here. This play could just, I, I can't do this, right? I really want to, but the problem is that if the Gyarados gets a Dragon Dance up, well, it should be okay because I still have Iron Hands, right? I'm going to double the Volcarona. This is a very risky play. Uh, without Landorus, this Gyarados is actually a pretty big problem. I, I was thinking only about leads. I wasn't really thinking about what I would do once Gyarados hit the field. Oh, that could be bad. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all righty. Um, I mean, it's not ideal by any means, but if that was Protect Dragon Ant, this game would have ended immediately, I think. <sighs> I still don't think Gyarados is likely to stay in here, but I don't really know what I can do about that. Like, does damage on the Volcarona even matter? I'm going to Shadow Ball the Gyarados to, just in case Sinistra comes in here. I want to make sure that it doesn't get in for free. Now, if King Gambit switches in here, I'm not in good shape. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say I'm in bad shape. But yeah, I mean, I knew Gyarados was switching, but the question is what's coming in. Is it Sinisha? Is it King Gambit? Is it Romeon? Oh man, that's not good. That is quite bad, actually. Oh, that actually did a lot. No drop, no drop. Okay, cover Dan. <sighs> yeah, this is suddenly looking really bad, actually. Oh, this is not good. I'm gonna get run over by this Volcarona. 
I'm basically just praying that Ogre Pond can handle it, to be honest. Like, that's kind of the game plan. There, there is another, uh, uh, like, option, though, which is that I can hope that Heatran eventually, like, beats it into 1v1, although with Life Orb, I'm actually not so sure. I can basically, if I time things correctly, I might be able to, I might be able to get the, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. I wasted another turn here. Oh, and now the Garros can come in kind of for free, right? Shoot. Okay, how am I gonna beat this Volcarona? I can try and KO it with Ogre Pond, that's one option. Um okay, I, I see I see one option to deal with this thing, though it's not a very good option. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Never mind. Um Okay, Gyarados is back in, right? It is Gyarados. Man, this is not good. I think that leaving Landorus was kind of a problem, to be honest. I, I shouldn't have done it. I have to switch into Ogre Pond here, right? And I have to go for Moonblast Gyarados. Does this even make sense? Oh wait, I meant to switch into Heatran. Oh, I just threw I just threw the game immediately. This game is over. I need to switch into Heatran this turn. I, I got one step ahead of myself because it was Heatran first to take the Heat Wave and then Ogre Pond when Fluttermane goes down. Oh, that was not that was not the right play, Wolf. That was actually incredibly not the right play. Oh, that was so bad. Okay, here's here's the Copium. They protect Volcarona. <laughs> Uh, I, I I got ahead of myself it's, I, because this Volcarona is so scary that I, I was like, I just wasn't thinking. Oh, well, this could be bad. Oh, this might be Gyarados. Okay. This is not good. This is, this is, this is not good. I'm going to keep it a buck. This should have been Heatran. It should have been Heatran. I knew what was coming. Go for Waterfall, please. Go for Waterfall, please. Oh man, if I switched Heatran in there, I was actually okay. Uh, anyone see a way for me to win this? Plus, I gotta, I gotta deal with plus one Gyarados. I gotta deal with plus three, two Volcarona. Okay, here's how I can still win this. I make a big baller play, ready? Swords Dance and Wild Charge. Does this play even make sense? Yes, it, it actually does make sense. Wait, hang on, I can, I can, can I win this? I don't think so, maybe. Because Iron Hands is really still very strong here, so... Okay, I actually I actually have seen a way to win this. Yes, okay, so here's the plan. He protects both this turn, okay? That's step one. Protects both. Now, next turn, he wants to go for Heat Wave and Terra Blast into my... into my Iron Hand, okay? He wants to go Heat Wave and Terra Blast into my Iron Hands to try and bait the Terra. Because he doesn't want to overcommit to the Ogre Pond, just in case I spike, because I'm probably going to spiky shield and tear out the Iron Hands here, right? So instead, I'm going to Terrastalize to water. Do we think Wild Charge one-shots? Probably, right? I have a lot of attack, I think, probably. He probably isn't that bulky. Okay, so I'm going to Terrastalize my Ogre Pond to water. And that's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to give me a resistance to Heat Wave rather than neutral. Number two, it's going to give me a special defense boost. So I do not know if I can take a Heat Wave with a special defense boost, but I'm going to hope that I can. That's kind of the plan here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, who? Wait, wait. Oh, Macha Gotcha. I got a big old face. Okay, I don't know if this plan works, but man, do I hope it does. I get a special defense boost because my mask is shining brilliantly. Is it Heat Wave? It is. Does it burn? I live, okay. Hang on, we're still in this. We're still in this somehow. Ivy Cudgel, plus one, plus two. I get the Volcarona, please don't burn me. I don't even know if it's a contact move. I don't even know if it can burn. Oh no, oh no, wait, but... Oh no, wait, hang on, this is not good. Because the, the, the Sinistra has... Oh, and I just used my Terra. Oh no -y. Wait, hang on, we are not, we are not... This is, this is not over. Oh man, that's not good. Because the thing is that Sinistra has Rage Powder and I, it can, I can't get around Rage Powder now because... Wait, I'm gonna lose. Okay, wait, I can win if Macha Gotcha misses. Or if he makes the wrong play this turn. Maybe he'll forget that I'm no longer a grass type because now Rage Powder will work on me. You know what's gonna win him this game? You know what's wild? I know what wins him this game is actually the Rocky Helmet item on the Gyarados because I think that I can... I'm wondering if I can take a plus one. Basically, like, I might be able to take a certain, like, a certain hit here. Yeah, Rage Powder, he knew. I don't think that this KO is, to be honest. Like, it's since just super tanky. Ivy Cudgel comes out. I could have Horn Leech, but it wasn't really much point to it. Wee! Uh, and 
is just so strong. Ugh, Dragon Dance. Yeah, okay. So the other option here is we could play the mini game. Because Aaron has to Aaron has to call correctly which which like I could protect one and attack with the other. Actually, can I just attack with both here? Can I Ivy Cudgel Flamethrower both into Nisha? I don't want to play like Aaron has outpredicted me every turn this set, and I think that it's possible that if he makes a mistake, or even if he doesn't, like depending on targeting here and depending on damage rolls, that I could win here. Waterfall comes out. Oh, he doesn't protect. Oh, did he intend to try and win a 1v1 with Sinistra versus Iron Hands? Because he might, that might have worked, actually. Mm -hmm. Ivy Cudgel comes out. I have, a, I have a thought here. It's so strong. I have a thought here. I think I fake out and Swords Dance this turn. This is, this is going to be right down to the wire. This protect, yeah. So my thought was that, is it ever worth protect spiky shielding on the on the mask on the ogre pawn here like is it ever worth spiky shielding i don't think so because i think wild charge will one shot let's do a little recap here the gyarados is plus one plus one i'm plus three plus one special defense and iron hands is neutral i'm gonna go for ivy cudgel and wild charge i'm gonna hope that it ko's with wild charge i think it will but i i'm not positive like I, I, like offensive gyarados is just not something i'm used to it's gonna be close honestly air blast okay who's it into into the into the teal mask or the well spring mask ogre pawn goes down i'm sorry ogre pawn so this comes down to whether or not wild charge goes terra flying gyarados i think it should right i mean iron hands is really strong but i'm not i'm, I'm genuinely not positive Okay. Whew. Okay. Just barely. That was that was probably pretty close to be honest. Wow. Yeah, Aaron made that incredibly difficult. That was a 2-0, but I think it, it didn't really feel like a 2-0 to be honest. Like getting around that Volcarona Gyarados lead was really difficult. Ogre Pond was really good, actually. Ogre Pond was really, really good. Even though I kind of switched it in too early by mistake. That that ability to get the special defense boost is just massive, right? Because a normal terrestrialization to water wouldn't have saved me there, but the combination of the special defense boost and the Terra changing my type to a resist. Like, I think it's so difficult to play against uh, a Pokemon that can just like randomly get a stat boost at any point during the game. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to Aaron. He's going to upload his side as well. So I recommend you check it out uh, if you're interested in kind of seeing his thought process and seeing how he made all these, all these like hard reads correct. So um, yeah, really cool team. And yeah, thank you for watching. And thanks again to Aaron for, for doing this with me. It was a lot of fun.